Welcome to Helping Hands with your hosts, John Neiman and Judy Ritchie. Hello and welcome to Helping Hands. This is our opportunity to let you in the community know how you can lend a helping hand to a program, agency, or somewhere in need. I'm Judy Ritchie, Community Advocate in Oshkosh Committee on Aging. I'm John Neiman with Aurora Medical Center and welcome to our August edition of Helping Hands. Uh, this show, as always, is brought to you by Aurora Healthcare with set design by Harnix on 9th Street. It is the wonderful month of August with, with a lot uh, going on and we have a lot to talk about. Uh, first of all, where can you see us? You see us on Life TV too. You can listen to us on the radio at, at 101.9 FM. And if you're looking for a specific listing to find our show during the week, just go to um, oshkoshmedia.org, uh, Life TV, and you can see the schedule for us and also all the other wonderful programming that takes place on Life TV. And we welcome you again to our August show. And we're also on YouTube. You well, my children, my children don't like to, to, to <laughs> me to talk about me being on YouTube because <laughs> it was popular for them until they found out I was on it. Yeah. Well, but yeah, otherwise, YouTube too and live streaming, all of that good stuff. Right. And today we've got the Military Veterans Museum and our representative is George Egner, a person that's been very involved in the community over the years. And he is a board member and treasurer. So, George, the museum, we used to think of it in terms of being down at Park Plaza Mall and that changed a few years ago. So a little bit of why the museum exists and where you are now. Okay, um, why we exist um, as our mission states is to preserve and honor the veterans through um, displaying artifacts and various educational programs. Uh, this gives an opportunity to the public to come in and view the facility and again show uh, their appreciation to the people that served. Um, our current facility, which is located at 4300 Poperesny Road, was originally, construction began in 2008 uh, it was completed in 2009. They, uh, there were a few years where the facility sat dormant because of lack of funds. Uh, and in 2014, we were able to, we were fortunate enough to secure enough funds to finish off the facility and we opened to the public in April of 2014. And you have a great location because you're highly visible from the highway, so people can see it as they're coming into town or as they're leaving from town. And it is a beautiful facility. And as our, our viewers can also see, there's footage running now um, of the museum. And for our radio audience, we wish that you could see it. Uh, but George is wonderful in talking about it. Now, George, one, one thing that we have when, when people talk about volunteering, they never consider being on a board or a committee a volunteer because they just think it's something that they do. But really, you're giving of your time and your expertise. Apparently, you're really good with money because <laughs> you're the treasurer also. Do you also do stuff in the museum then too? Yes, I'm, uh, besides <coughs> serving in a leadership role, as you stated, I'm on the board of directors and the treasurer. Uh, I serve as one of the committee chair people uh, and I'm also on two other working committees. So I'm very involved as far as the museum is concerned. Uh, people that are looking for opportunities to get involved, um, as was previously stated, uh, not only do we look for people in leadership roles, but also in support roles, uh, whether that be serving on a committee. Uh, we have a program established where we have trained docents that are able to take people through the museum, uh, explain a lot of the vehicles that are featured in the museum, uh, most of them being World War II vintage, uh, and also tell some of the background or story connected with a lot of the displays that are featured uh, in our museum. 
Um, I know uh, I also serve as a cashier. Uh, Again, the money. So go, go <laughs> figure. Uh, but um, Again, that just kind of gives me an opportunity to get to know people, and I really encourage people that come to visit our museum to hopefully go around with a docent because we can get, mm -hmm. we can learn as much from them exactly. as we as they can learn from us. So, so did, you, did you start this when you officially retired, or were you doing this? before you retired, or are you not retired? He is semi-retired. <laughs> uh, well, I, I officially retired in June of, of 2010. Uh, at that time, I owned a small business, and after I sold the business, my wife uh, approached me and felt that I would be qualified to be treasurer of the organization, and uh, that's when I took an active role oh in the organization um, so um, you know it's just it, ke it keeps me very involved and I really am thankful for the opportunity. So. so if somebody wants to volunteer what is the process? The process would be to contact either any of the board members uh, we, or you can stop out at the museum during our hours of operation uh, we do have a information sheet that can be completed. Uh, they can call the museum um, and express an interest. We can take the name, et cetera. Um, so um, it's really not that difficult of a process to, to get involved. So in. the phone number, cause, because the hours of operation are on the screen, 10 to 5, Friday through Sunday. So the phone number is 920. 426-8615. So they can call and either talk to a live person or leave a message, which I have done before when I needed something from right. you guys. Okay. And then you're always very good in responding and getting back. So, and that would be any of the volunteer needs uh, that you do have. The docent one I think is very interesting too because um, you're teaching, you're teaching the public about things and about our history. Right. But like you said, you're also learning from the people who are there. Right. Um, one point I'd like to make uh, in reference to people volunteering, uh, it is not a prerequisite that you are a veteran. Uh, we have several people, some serving on our board, some serving as docents, et cetera, in various capacities that have no military experience. They're history but buffs, though. A lot of them are history buffs. Some of them are there just to show their appreciation uh, for and to the mm -hmm. veterans. Mm -hmm. um, one of the, the displays, and you said that in the summer it's not as available as it is over the winter time, but it's been in the parade, is Brutus. Tell us a little bit about that, because that's really intriguing. Okay, um, we were very fortunate uh, last summer to be contacted by this gentleman uh, from Winnicani who, own, who is the owner of Brutus. Now for people who do not know are, are familiar with the um, Brutus and what type of uh, military equipment it is. It's basically a gun truck that was used in Vietnam. Now, how it got to become a gun truck, uh, it was used by a lot of the transportation units in Vietnam. That truck, when it was shipped over to Vietnam, it was basically a troop carrier. It had no uh, elements of defense or anything or equipment with it. Uh, so what the people in the field that were using the vehicle, it took a, it, they took it upon themselves to, to basically build some armor uh, that would protect the, the people riding in the vehicle the cargo that they were carrying. And um, so they mounted it with two 50 caliber machine guns and they were fortunate enough to get a uh, gun from the Air Force uh, that they put on the back of it to uh, basically for their own protection. Uh, so um, the Brutus itself is kept at the museum for on display. Uh, in the summer months, it's used 
primarily in a lot of the local parades, mm -hmm. special events. We'll take it up to, for example, um, if we go up to the Timber Rattlers or something, if okay. they have a military day or something. Nice. Um, so uh, in the winter, it is on permanent display. Uh, we have a sort of a, an agreement with the owner that uh, he gives us the we have the right to display it in, okay. in exchange for. So how did he get the name Brutus? Um, it was the name that was given by the units that were using it. There were probably, uh, there were several gun trucks used in Vietnam and mm -hmm. each unit they named, named their, their name. Uh, they named the vehicle themselves. Okay. okay. Um, and apparently there is only one authentic gun truck that was used in Vietnam that was shipped back. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Brutus is not the one. But okay. So, but a good strong name, Brutus, you yes, know what we're right. talking about. Then. And uh, very close to the original. Yes, yes. Uh, it was uh, obviously we had to restore a lot of the, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, protection um, element on, on the machine or on the truck itself when it came to us. So, so anyone that uh, was watching the 4th of July parade, it was the last truck in the unit sure. with the Military Veterans Museum. Uh, section of the parade. Right. And it's a big truck. Remember, mm -hmm. we talked about yes. it. Um, with your volunteers, it's not necessarily all men, correct? Correct, correct. Uh, um, we can use, like I said, basically anybody that's willing to give some time to the museum. Uh, it could be as little as maybe uh, a couple hours a month. Uh, serving as a docent or a cashier. Um, we are constantly looking for people to serve on our committees, a uh, person that's maybe willing to give up one night uh, a month. To Which serve. really is not that, it's not no. that much. No. And then on our screen for our audience again, um, it, it talks about, like you said, you have a variety of things, the lawn maintenance to help inventory. So if you have somebody who uh, is very organized or very into history, that would be play into theirs. The tech support and web support, that's another area that there are people that are experts in that. And you could use help with that also, besides the committee members. So you do offer a lot for the people. Something else that was interesting, because you don't see this uh, in many places, is you do not charge. That you are, You ask for a donation, which I think is really mm -hmm. nice because it does give families or maybe classes a place to go to learn about the valuable history. And so I commend you guys for not having to have gone to that charge thing yet, like a lot of the other museums have gone to where they weren't that way before. So that's really nice. Yes, we found that to be very beneficial to the operation of the, of the museum. Uh, I think people are somewhat flabbergasted or shocked when I tell them because I, I like I said I serve as a cashier one of the responsibilities is the cashier is to welcome the visitors and when I tell them that there there is no admission charge uh, they seem like it just lifts their spirits yeah. and said you know here's an, like you said here's an opportunity we can come in here we can study history we can show our appreciation and it's working out well for everyone involved okay. Well, George, we're down to our last minute. What do you want to tell our audience that you haven't said yet, or what do you want to repeat? Well, I think the biggest thing is um, I want to unveil probably the biggest military secret in the city of Oshkosh. And you're museum. hearing it on Helping Hands here, <laughs> right here. <laughs> that the museum is open to the public uh, weekends, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from 10 to 5. And I would personally invite everybody, not only in the Oshkosh area, but we do get a lot of visitors from out of state to please come and um, enjoy our museum. That's very, very nice. And again, the number for people interested is 426-8615. Or as our audience also knows, they also can call Judy or myself and we'll be glad to pass on the information to our audience. We're so glad, George, that you could be on the show today to talk about this because we've been trying to get someone for We've been a while. talking for a long time. I'll talk about having you guys on because it's a beautiful building, a beautiful facility, and a wonderful tribute to veterans yes. and people who have served. So thank you very much. Well, thank you for inviting thank me. You. 
and stay tuned. We'll be back for our second segment of our August edition of Helping Hands. It's not a charity, it's more than a charity. It's about helping people we live with. It's about being the type of person that the six-year-old version of ourselves wanted us to be. It's about community and looking out for one another. It's about money, yes, but it's so much more than money. It's about friendship and common values. It's about opening doors when others are slammed shut. It's about giving kids a place to be kids and growing up knowing they live in a community that cares about them. It's about making sure that everyone gets to see the dentist because we want to make sure that they have every last tooth in those smiles. Ultimately, that's it. It's about the smiles, old smiles and new smiles. It's about us, all of us, our community living united because great things happen when we live united. Will you join us? Welcome back to our August edition of Helping Hands. This is our chance to talk about what's going on in Event City. And August is a really busy month with lots of stuff going on, including um, the ever popular kids getting ready to go back to school. Really popular. My <laughs> great grandson is just, oh, got to have the right backpack. And this summer has just flown by everyone can I know they keep saying as you get older the time flies but boy it really has it has gone by quickly with lots of stuff to do so this is our chance just to talk about things going on um, do want to talk about the community blood drive uh, that will take place at Aurora Healthcare on Thursday August 17th uh, thank you to our crew for putting the screenshot up it's 8 30 to 12 30 so it's limited time um, but the need is really there, and we really do encourage people um, to call Aurora uh, to get information on making an appointment at 456-6000 uh, to get information on this blood drive at Aurora, uh, 830 to 1230 on August 17th. Right, and people need to understand that over summer, the donations are down and the need is up. There are so many accidents in the summer uh, with the need for the blood. Mm -hmm. People go on vacation and forget about, it. well, I'll, I'll just put it off till next month. Mm -hmm. And it's really, really important to stay on that schedule as best you can. Exactly. And one thing that Aurora does, which I appreciate too, is the caregivers who work at Aurora and the volunteers can leave their shift to donate the blood and make the appointments. We really would like to have the appointments because then the community blood drive staff knows how, how much to staff for it how many refreshments to buy, because you always get those good refreshments after you give blood. So we really do encouraging you. Um, volunteering, as we talked about in our last segment, is not just physically being there as the cashier at the Veterans Museum, but it's also being a committee member, a board member. It's also by donating things. So Absolutely. You know, and it's the blood, um, but a lot of other things. If you can't give blood, think about something else or uh, just spread the word yes. that it's, this event is occurring. That, that really helps too. Um, I also wanted to, we, we need to hear more about the good going on in our community. And, and for many years now, uh, UWO has hosted something called the Citizenship Day. And I know that your facilities has benefited from it. United Way benefits from it, I do. It's where they send the RAs out from school uh, beforehand to learn about all the, the not-for-profits and everything going on in our city so they can take back to the residents of the dorms. Right, and then the dorms from that choose from the various organizations, which ones they like to support. So they're, they're collecting food periodically or they're uh, going, making cards or the tray favors, mm -hmm. uh, going out and uh, helping growing Oshkosh clean up the grounds. Yes all sorts of things so whether it's the physical even helping with websites or uh, mm -hmm. other you know in doing input on the computers 
And that one special day is Thursday, August 24th. So um, when you're around town in August on the 24th, look out for all, because they come out and they wear special t-shirts and they go to all the different businesses, either in the morning or the afternoon. We are blessed enough to always to get two groups. And we try to give them, we try to teach them about Aurora. We also try to give them projects that will um, benefit Aurora or the residents and they can take them back. And then if a freshman student comes in and says, hey, I want something to do in this field, they have the information to it. So I really commend uh, the RAs and the student leaders at our university and, for and that. And for the public, explain an RA. Yeah, so yeah, I know I had to learn all that too. The CA, the RA, uh, resident assistants. So these would be the people that are watching your children in the dorms when your children go back to school. Uh, they would be the leaders on the floors. And they're, they're always trying to get the youth out of the room, involved in the college, in the community. That's how we get some of our great volunteers. Absolutely, because they participate with a few of these events and that may you know to the parents chagrin I'm changing my major mom uh, but they may find something that they really truly have a passion mm -hmm. for that they they didn't know before they had that exposure mm -hmm. and that's really true though because we have uh, there's something called the Fox Valley Healthcare Alliance which is a, a joint venture between Theta uh, Affinity and Aurora where where kids can come in and they can um, go through little preview things of what their careers could be. They're all juniors in high school. But we've actually had people change their majors because I still remember uh, them in the lab passing out when they saw blood and they decided mm -hmm. nursing was not for them. Right. So it is a good chance for, for them, which we really didn't have when we were no. growing up. You know, we just, either you knew what you wanted to do or you worked or... Or your parents or your guidance yep. counselor told you what you were going to yes, do. Yes, exactly. And now the younger they can get, we can get them volunteering mm -hmm. in. Like for us, again, it's age 15. That is so much better for, for the kids today because they can plan their high school classes and their college classes that way too. And when they reach that college level, a lot of times that experience that they've had in high school or even the, that first year of college can count a lot towards their future classes, mm -hmm. can make a huge difference when they're applying for jobs. Mm -hmm. um, because they're learning a lot of skills, um, you know, time management and, you know, communication, all those things that we don't have a specific class for. Mm -hmm. That's right. Also wanted to talk about the Aurora Gift Shop. Because this past year, I've had some people retire. Oh, the, I, is that the hint that it's time for me to actually do the paperwork? So, I, and actually these people have been with us since the beginning. I've, I've actually had three retire after 14 years at Aurora. And the one thing um, about the volunteers at Aurora, I'm sure it's other places too, but they want their day and they want their schedule. And so as you know, being around the gift shop, I have volunteers that are steady every Monday, every Tuesday, every Wednesday. So there aren't many openings, but now we do have openings. So I bring it up to our wonderful community here uh, using our show Helping Hands, which is about volunteering, is if you're interested in volunteering here um, at Aurora, give myself a call or Judy, or if you're interested in learning more about volunteering at um, the other hospitals or the nursing homes such as Evergreen, or Park Bethel, View. Park Bethel. View. They also have wonderful gift shops too, and it's a great way for you to give back time. Just give us a call. Uh, of course, myself at Aurora at 456-7013. And actually, mine would be email, and it's judy dot r-i-c-h-e-y at aim, A-I-M dot com. Hey, you got that memorized. I do, finally. Um, since I retired, my, and I, we talked about that I would be coming over and working in the gift shop, but I still haven't got my schedule or my life to a routine mm -hmm. that I can truly commit to something extra at this point. But um, I still enjoy coming over. You know, we've got the craft sale, mm -hmm. gift sale coming up. You know, more filling in for people in mm -hmm. different locations than being committed to a single right. activity at this point. And, that, and that's the beauty of volunteering, which we wanted to bring up in this segment, too, because this is the August show, and August does mean 
getting ready to go back to school and what do a lot of people do then is they get back into the volunteering mode if they took it off for the summer so for us for instance we've talked about this before um, to volunteer at most places the age limit is 15. some do 14 some do 16. Um, but our process too is not just calling um, evergreen or mercy or aurora and just saying hey i have some time i'm going to volunteer tomorrow because that's not how it that's not how it works no, even though people think it does right. it's important to have that background check and that is a criminal background check as well as references and it doesn't mean that you don't trust us but rather that it's for the protection of the volunteer mm -hmm. as well as the patients residents public whoever um, that there aren't some bad things going on or that we don't have communicable diseases mm -hmm. and each environment has some different requirements mm -hmm. and just realize that when we're asked these questions it's not to intrude on our lives it's to protect us it's to protect everyone right and it's to make it the best experience possible so if you're thinking about um, as a student coming to volunteer or as someone now who has more time because you're retired or want to do something um, the basic tenets of volunteering would be the safety the HIPAA, which is privacy, the orientation, but then also the health history, which Judy talked about. Um, those go hand in hand, whether you're going to go to a nursing home, a care center, et cetera. So expect that when you come in, I would say expect the process to take maybe three weeks to, from, from beginning to end. Um, there are some places still in town where if you want to go and just volunteer, they don't have the stringent things because they don't deal with all of, all of that. Absolutely. But the other is that if you wanted to volunteer for Aurora or for Mercy or, you know, these, you forgot the knitter's nook. So people can be knitting the baby hats, caps, you know, booties, sweaters, whatever, uh, doing things like that. Mm -hmm. The prayer shawls, the afghans, the blankets. With the cancer centers, the blankets and the afghans are, the, the patients love them because they're cold there. Mm -hmm. and it's nice to have something. Uh, you always keep a, a basket in the chapel. And again, someone that's going through a crisis situation, and it's nice to know that there's a blanket or an afghan there that's a forever one. That's very, and I like the way you said that forever, so we're not loaning it out and you have to give it back when your treatment's done. So again, um, if you're interested in knowing more about volunteering and giving back, whether on site or through donations, uh, give myself a call, John Neiman at Aurora Medical Center, 456-7013. Or Judy Ritchie at J-U-D-Y dot R-I-C-H-E-Y at AIM, A-I-M dot com. We're glad that you could be here for our August edition of Helping Hands. Thank you very much and uh, make it a great month.